Uh, hi everyone, I hope everyone is doing well, everyone is safe. So let's continue our discussion on the implementation of ROTNET, a self-supervised approach. So we started with, by discussing the whole idea that, you know, when we have unlabeled data set, what we can do is simply take an image, rotate it, and the degree of rotation becomes your proxy labels or the proxy task, and we do the training. And then we use this learned representation, uh, use the knowledge of it and fine tune on the actual task and then improve the performance of it. So that was the whole idea. And in this context, we were using the data set, Flowers data set from Kaggle, which is five class classification. So we prepare the data loader for both supervised learning and the unsupervised learning. And then once we had the data loader, then we did training. So we were trying to emulate the scenario when we have good amount of unlabeled data and a small amount of labeled data. So on this unlabeled data, we did the self-supervised pre-training of ROTNET. And then we used the learned representation uh, and then fine tune on the small label data set for the actual task of flower recognition. And we already observed that when we did this kind of uh, pre-training and used the pre-trained model, the result improved as when we were not doing the pre-training. So we did this, uh, you know, freezing of different layers and then fine tuning different layers. And then we saw that in case of our case, ResNet 18, that uh, the features or the representation after the layer two gave the best result. When fine tuned, up, the features after the layer two, when fine tuned on the actual data set, gave the best result. So this is one way of doing uh, this evaluation of your self-supervised learning model by transfer learning, where you transfer the learned representation to different tasks or some different target task. And another very popular way is this linear separation. So the idea is that you take the features and then you simply train a linear classifier, say logistic regression. So in our case, we have this ResNet 18, we have this uh, you know, count blocks, then we had this average pool and then fully connected layer. So we simply use this uh, count block as feature extractor, have the features and then train a logistic regression. And the idea is very simple that if the features or the representation are good enough, if the learned features are really good, then you, they will be linearly separable because there will be a good feature. So that task can be done by simple logistic regression and we don't need a, you know, a, a, a non-linear network or a non-linear classifier. So we'll see how we can do this. We'll go through the code and we'll train and we'll see. And then we'll also try to plot the features on the tensor board, maybe in this part or the second part of the video. And we'll see how the features are in the embedding space, both for the ROTNET and after we fine tune for the actual flower recognition task, how the features are. And then uh, we'll try to answer the question, which I realize a bit later that maybe, maybe for this uh, flowers data set, this, uh, not maybe, I think so, that uh, ROTNET is not a good uh, good way of doing self-supervised training. So we'll discuss all these points, uh, basically not all these points, the linear the linear classification of the linear separation of the features and the tensor board and this question of why the flowers data set, why using ROTNET for flowers data set would not be a great idea. So let's get started. So let's first discuss the question we raised in the previous video that why ROTNET may not be a great idea for, for this flowers data set. So if you see this image of cat, you can clearly see some differences. You can clearly notice that this is a you know, normal cat. This is a rotated cat by 90 degree and this is a rotated cat by 180 degree. And that's because this cat has some salient features some uh, you know important features like nose ears eyes that is easily visible and which depends on the relative position or the relative orientation with respect to the entire image so we can we can know from the image you know that this is a zero degree this is 90 degree because the eyes or the ears align vertically however if you see the flowers data set like this rose or this dandelion there is no such salient features which which clearly shows the orientation or which depends on the relative position, relative position with respect to the entire image. If you see this, this is a rose with zero degree. This is a rose with 90 degree and this is a rose with 180 degree. But even for us like human, it, it, it looks kind of same. And if you see this picture of dandelion, you can, you cannot make out which is a rotated one. So if you train, you know, if you train a classifier to predict the degree of rotation, it will not be a good classifier because all the all the classes that is zero degree, 90 degree or 180 degree look same in many of the images. 
so this if you have this kind of data set so i think rotnet would not be a good idea to go with unless those data set has some salient features which which is easily dis discernible with the rotations or with the orientations so even if you see for some other examples like this rows this white rows or this one even if you rotate it uh, it will be tough for even us as a human to make out which degree of rotation it is or or or, or data set like this so this is one reason and this actually i should have realized it uh, much in the beginning before i chose this data set but again this serves as you know a learning that i think it was mentioned in some paper also somewhere but this also serves as learning that you know this kind of data set may not be a good idea uh to use using rotnet may not be a good idea when we have this kind of data set which has some repeating patterns or even like like this kind of texture data where you know even if you rotate it it has some kind of repeating pattern and which do, which does not gives you significant uh, information about the rotation okay so i hope you got the idea why uh, rotnet would not be great for this kind of data set uh, including the flowers data set now let's move to our main topic of this video that linear separation so we have this input we have this representation network we have this representation and we try to learn it with a linear classifier say logistic regression so in our case what we can do so we have this resnet 18 where we have you know layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 layer 4 then we have an average pool and then we have a fully connected layer of four uh, for predicting the four rotation classes 0 degree 90 degree 180 and 270 so what we can do simply is uh okay what happened here okay yeah so we'll simply get this you know feature extractor part or this con block as feature extractor and then we'll get the features or the representation from the network and then these features then we'll train using a logistic regression for our main task of uh, uh recognizing the flowers and by this you know if the features are good then logistic regression will do well if not it won't do well in our case, I observed it was not doing well and one reason could be, you know, because the features were not good enough. It was okay, but not good enough. So, yeah, and how, how we can do, so we'll do for three cases. So, you know, this is the normal, you know, uh, we have these four layers. We take these features and then we do a logistic relation. Then we'll also, what we'll do is instead of taking features from the layer four, we'll take features from layer three and then do a you know logistic regression because we observed that when we are doing fine tuning after layer features after layer 2 then it was uh, you know performing the best so same way we can see maybe uh, the features which is after layer 2 they are kind of good and they are kind of separable for this kind of logistic regression but we have to try it out so we'll do this uh, features we'll extract features from layer 4 layer 3 layer 2 and then we'll separately do a training with a logistic regression and then we'll see which one is doing best and this kind of linear sep linear separability technique can be used to even compare different self supervised model to know you know which of the self supervised model give you the best representation so so i think now let's see in the code let's let's uh, directly jump into the code and let's see how we can uh, get the feature save the features and then train a logistic regression So if you remember the code structure, we have this self-supervised learning uh, as you know main parent folder, and then we have so many modules or sub-modules. So in the SSL eval, sorry, so in the SSL eval, I have a script called savefeatures.py. So you just have to open that script, and then I'll walk you through it, and we'll run it as well. So basically, you import all the required libraries. So uh, you know for the data loaders, for uh, TQDM, NumPy, etc, etc. So this is, and then we set, you know, default, uh, you know, flow tensor value. But the main uh, important function here is called save features. So this, uh, this function I have taken from this GitHub or uh, by, I, I use minute deep learning exploration. So, so what is basically in PyTorch, if you want to, you know, get the intermediate outputs, we have to use a forward hook. So here we are creating a forward hook to the layers that whichever will be you know giving it to the model to whichever layer will pass it will create a forward hook then we'll have a uh, features variable to which we'll be appending the features so here we'll be stacking all the features in the self.features and this will this class will basically give you self.features which will have features for all your images when you pass it through the forward pass 
and then this is the get prediction function where you have to pass the model and the input batch on which you want the prediction and it simply predicts it and calculate your you know output just do a forward pass and then the features that i have i am saving it as a dictionary so basically i am saving in the format that uh, a dictionary key will be the image name and its value will be the feature okay and similarly for uh, uh, this image name like if you see this this is a feature dict where we'll have key as image names and features as its value and we'll have labels dict corresponding labels dict where we'll have image name as key and its corresponding labels as its value and then once we have that we'll simply dump it using a pickle file uh, and we'll save it using whichever the path you mention it and then that that's it so we will will be have uh, will be getting the features of our rotnet model so my best checkpoint is resnet 18 best.pth and it resides in my self supervised ssl rotnet so in the experiments it's in self supervised for me uh, and it's in the rotnet resnet 18 best and then i have this config file which is the config ssl which will be here in this experiment folder and then I'll simply load it and then I define, you know, whether you want to use CUDA, then get the device, then the, this is the root path for the data set, uh, where data set. So I'll switch off all the augmentation right now and even switch off the pretext task. So, uh, just like I want the, I want the images to just pass and like just get the features of it. So I don't want to. Uh, do any kind of rotation on my data loader so this this will help to you know get rid of it and then i'll call the model and then uh, the checkpoint and i'll load the checkpoint uh, to the model and then push the model to the device then i'll have this data loader if you remember i have this data loader function which will on calling gives you the data loader and then i will define from which layer i want to extract the features and then i'll define the feature path the feature directory where i want to save the features and then I'll save my train features, uh, the path for the train features, test features. And then I will call the save feature class with that layer name. And then call the save features as dict function. And then, you know, this will do, do our job. Okay. So let us run this. So first of all, what I'll do is uh, let me run step by step so I can show you how things are. So I am just importing libraries first of all. Ah, it's taking some time and then I'll call this save feature class the get prediction function and then save features as dictionary function all of them and then I will define my experiment directory the config file and I will run this and then I will call my model and load the checkpoints on it okay so it says it's storing with weights from this so now if you see the model, I have FC linear, average pool, then the uh, layer 4 first con block, 0th con block, then layer 3 first con block, 0th con block and so on. So what we'll do, we'll take features first from the layer 4 and then from the layer 3 and then from the layer 2. Okay, so I will go reverse. So first of all, I'll take from the, uh, from the below the features. So let me first call the, so if you see, yeah, let me first call the data loader. So I'm just having this train and test. I'm not calling the validation features because I have just train and test data set and validation I was inter internally using it for um, training. So yeah, I'll call the data loader. Now the layer name from which I have to extract it, it will be for me as layer name model dot layer four of one so if you see this again this is the layer four and layer four of one will be this last con block okay so i will do that and just to show you once again so it means i'm getting features from here so this this example here the next i'll get from here and next from here okay cool so i will uh, yeah uh, i'll put my layer name as simply model.layer4 and then this is just to see the you know output shape this is a summary 
a model summary so you need a library called tot, tot summary I'll, i have also made a video about this so we'll see that later now i'll define the features part so i'll name this as features one so i'll delete my old things that i've created i'll just delete it and delete it and delete this as well and this as well okay so now uh, what I'll, I'll name this as features one and then my uh, other stuff like the features would be saved in train features stick train label stick test features stick and test label stick and so i'll simply call all the other functions that we just uh, defined so i will call it from here and then it will start calling there are 400 uh, sample label samples if you remember the small label data samples and then let's see yeah so it will for the train data and for the test data and yeah one thing is i'm initializing uh, this sf features class once before calling the uh, feature extraction for the train data and then once one for calling the uh, feature extraction for the test data otherwise this uh, uh, save features uh, variable on the same variable even the test features were appending so yeah but if you run this code basically it will get your features here and if you see it's train features train labels and similarly you will have uh, test features test labels okay so now if you have to have the features for uh, the next previous con block so simply you have to make it of layer 3 of 1 okay and then you can simply run it so if i run it now by just making layer 3 let's see oh sorry sorry i i did a mistake here <laughs> so basically i should have made this as features 2 otherwise it will overwrite it okay so i'll make this as features too and then i will run it and then it will do for two and then when i have to do for the second layer what i'll do i simply uh, comment this and name it as features three and then you know it will get saved here so if you see features two is being written now and then features three would be written so yeah this this is the process for you know extracting the features just change the layer name from where you want to extract the features uh, create a new folder you know features one features two and then uh, you know we are we are good to go we have the features and then next what once we have these features ready then we'll be training our uh, logistic regression on this okay